Jeremiah chapter 36. Another one of them favorite chapters like Jeremiah chapter 10. And it came to pass the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that the word of the Lord of Jeremiah, the word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book. And you've seen the rolls. They're called books. And write there on all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel. So pretty much everything that, that Jeremiah said so, so far with the coming invasion to repent and get right and if they don't what's going to happen against Judah and against all the nations from the day I stank unto thee that goes all the way back to chapter 1 from the days of Josiah even unto this day so pretty much, you're going to get, you're not going to get everything that it's in Jeremiah so far, but you're going to get a condensed. And it may be in the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I have purposed to do unto them. And what God's doing, he's giving them a second chance to read it. Jeremiah's been preaching it. Now God tells him, write it down. Maybe this will get them to repent. And you're going to get as much repentance as the lad to see in church age is repenting over the word of God, which is not happening. You know, people want these great revivals. They want this great thing of the Philadelphia church period, the open door. We are the lad to see in church the rights of the people with the closed door. And we're doing everything against God's nature. We are boasting and bragging about, and God says, no, that's not you. And that's exactly what Judah and Israel and Jerusalem's doing. That's why I said Jeremiah needs to be read in the light of the church age in the days of America. There is outright rebellion. And God has a few men out there that are preaching the truth unto the day of the rapture that men may turn from their evil way saved or lost that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. You know, Christians today, they'll, they'll look at the, you know, the world of sinners, they, they do this wrong, they do that wrong. Listen, this thing with COVID-19 and you don't have President Trump as your president and you're crybabying and all that, that you don't have what you want, you don't have what you you will and you're not going to get what you want and you're crybabying. I seen the other day a truck going down a road in Daytona Beach, Florida with a flag and it said the F-bomb Biden. If that's not rebellion against God, I was sure if I would have stopped that guy, I would almost assure that guy was it. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Then what's the Bible say in, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3? Aren't we supposed to pray for all the leaders? Doesn't Romans 13 say we're to obey the powers that be? I quote the other day, the powers that be, President Biden, President Trump, President Obama, President Clinton, President Bush, President Reagan, President, all of them. They are an ordained power of God, by God. Even if the devil put them in the office, God allowed it to happen. I did a message about that the other night. Now, Jeremiah can go up to God like, like a Christian today. I don't like Josiah. I don't think Josiah will get the throne. Jeremiah, Jeremiah has done everything that God's told him to do, no matter who's been on the throne. I think he's got three or four kings. And when Peter and Paul write to the Christian, 
We're to honor the, the powers that be. We're to pray for the powers that be. They've got Nero on the throne. And there are Christians today that don't even know what I said. It's a shame. We need to be like Jeremiah. God says, go preach to that man. And we go preach to that man. Go to that assembly over there and preach to those men. You go over there and preach to those men. Stand on this street corner. Go knock on this door. Go pass out gospel tracts here and there. That's what we're to do. Government's wicked. The government's evil. Okay, that's between them and God. We are to do what's right. Then Jeremiah called Baruch, the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah the words of the Lord. Dictation. Which he spoke in unto him, inspiration, upon a roll of a book. So, God spoke to Jeremiah, inspiration. Jeremiah spoke to Baruch, dictation. Oh, men wrote the Bible. Okay, there it is, Jeremiah 36, 4. But God did not touch by the Holy Spirit the heart of Shakespeare. God did not touch the heart of the writer again, I forgot his name, Sherlock Holmes, Doyle. God did not touch the heart, though there's scripture in Melville when he wrote Moby Dick. God did not touch the heart of the founding fathers of whatever books they wrote in the Constitution. The Constitution was not written by God because there's no God in the Constitution. There's no Jesus Christ in the Constitution. Read it. God is not religion. You allow the Catholics, the Methodists, the, the Muslims with the religion of the Constitution. And you kick God out, and you kick the Bible out, and you kick Jesus Christ out. You know it's true, don't like it, you take it up with God. He's probably not speaking to you because you're rebelling against God by the government. You won. The Holy Spirit, the ink of the pen that is held in Jeremiah's hand. That Jeremiah passed on to Baruch, write this down. There's a double inspiration there in chapter 36, verse 4. God spoke to Jeremiah, and Jeremiah spoke to Baruch. What are you going to do with that one? Later on, you'll see that Baruch is a scribe. That's who's in charge of the Word of God. Copying and make sure it's all correct. And Jeremiah commanded Baruch, and I say his name wrong, I apologize. I will apologize to him when I get in heaven. Well, how many people call me or talk to me? Is it styly, stilly, stoly, style, what do we? Everybody gets names correct. Saying, I am shut up. I cannot go in the house of the Lord. So Jeremiah is in prison. Therefore, go thou and read the roll. The scroll. Which thou hast written from my mouth the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. So the day of fasting, Jeremiah from God said, write the words down, Beirut. Not only do you write it down, I want you to go read them. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their city. So Baruch has a great commission here. Of the word of God to be read from Jeremiah by God. And the purpose it may be they will present their supplications before. They'll repent. And will return everyone from his evil way, repentance. For great is the anger and the fury that the Lord has pronounced against his people. That's what's been written. Babylon's coming. 
famine, pestilence, war, sword. And Baruch the son of Neriah did all according to all that Jeremiah the prophet commanded him, reading the book of the words of the Lord, of the Lord. See that? The words of the Lord, even though there's a middle man, Jeremiah, there's still the words of the Lord. Though it was spoken to Jeremiah, and Jeremiah spoke to Baruch, and Baruch wrote it down. It's still the words of the Lord. In the Lord's house. He's in the temple. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that they proclaimed a fast before the Lord to all the people of Jerusalem. There they go. They're fasting, getting, trying to get right with God, maybe. And to all the people that came from the cities of Ju Judah and Jerusalem. Then read Baruch the book of the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. He's in the temple. He's reading what Jeremiah read to him from the Lord. In the chamber or the room of Gemariah, the son of Shephat, the scribe in the higher court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house in the ears of all the people. So he's got a group of people gathering the people reading what Jeremiah told him to write in the Lord's house. Now let me stop there and ask you a little question. Let me put a little side note that's not a side note. How many churches today will say, oh, welcome to the house of the Lord. We did a message about that the other night. Would you think that those houses of the Lord would welcome me to come into their house, open up the King James 1611 Bible, and preach and read to them from what the Word of God says? I know one church right now, they wanted me to leave. They don't want to hear the Word of God. And I've tried it countless times. I had the pastor sit here in my, I don't know what to do, I don't know if I should get rid of you or should just not come back. I got a pastor get mad at me because of VBS about the decoration. And he came up, came up weeks later with this whole big list of other things. That's a week later. I still got the text of the original message because you know what? No, I don't think you should come back. And then added other things to it. Another another church. Well, you want to go, you're gonna go visit that church, you'll be just as happy there. What would the houses of God be if I were to walk in those houses of God with the King James Bible open up and start reading to the people? They call the police. They'll get rid of me. They don't want me to be there. Yet, do you know that's exactly what Paul did? Jeremiah 36 10. You know, that's exactly what Jesus did. That's exactly what John did. That's exactly what, what Peter did. They went into the temple and they preached and taught. Paul went into synagogues. Paul would sit down in the synagogue. Yeah, okay. It's got some got some good characteristics in that message, but something was wrong. And then the the the, the, the rabbi would say, Has anybody here got anything else to say? Yeah, the hand in the back. You got something to say? Alright, give you liberty. <laughs> and Paul would get up and address the people. You did that in the church today, they'd call the cops and get rid of you and lock the door, slam the door, and lock it up tight. With a sign out front of the church, all are welcome here. That last church I was in forbidden me to go talk to the people. And tell them the truth. When Micaiah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Shiphan, had heard out of all the out of the book all the words of the Lord written by Baruch in the mouth of Jeremiah into the ears by the mouth of God. Still the word of God. He heard the word of God and he got scared. 
Very few people today, when they're reading the Word of God, get scared. April 25th, 1987, when I had a King James Bible being opened up to me, read to me, I was lost, I got scared. And I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. He went down to the king's house, into the scribe's chamber. Scribes were the ones that handled the, law, handled the word of God. They would copy the word of God, and they had precise instruction on how to copy the word of God. Lo, all the princes sat there, and princes are under the king. Even Elishma described, Deliah, not Deliah, Samson's girlfriend, the son of Shemaiah, and El Nathan, that's Nathan with El, that's El, E L, that's Jehovah, the son of Archbal, and Gemariah, the son of Shephan, and Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. So, Micaiah, he's got a greater group of people now. He's heard the word of God. You know he got right because he went and got other people. And we're not even looking at the New Testament. He has believed with his heart the words of the Lord and his mouth is opening. Hey, let me tell you what God said. Did you hear what Jeremiah wrote? God is angry with us. And when you got somebody who professes to be a Christian or a pastor, hey, these people trusted Jesus Christ, and they don't open your mouth, with the heart man believes unto righteous, with the mouth confession made unto salvation. If your mouth doesn't open, I have the right to judge your salvation. Now, I can't say you're saved or lost, but I have that right to say, I don't, I don't know. And Micaiah declared unto them all the words that he heard. When Baruch read the book in the ears of the people. So Micaiah is going to the people. Did you hear? You didn't, you didn't hear what Baruch read in the words of God? Let me tell you what was said. Therefore all the princes said to Jehudai, the son, I mean, there's a lot of names in this one. Nethaniah, the son of Shemaliah, the son of Cushai, onto Baru. He's back in the picture again. Saying, Take in thy hand the roll, wherein thou hast read in the ears of the people, and come. You don't see that in today's church age. You don't see when a man gets up before a church, I'm referring to the last church I was in. Sorry, all right, here's the pulpit. Explain to the, to the Christians what you say is a sin and your evidence on why Easter and Christmas is a sin. That didn't happen. I got quoted at, at you know, at the end of these reports, I put all the people's brains I borrowed from. Because I borrow brains. I don't know nothing about archaeology. I've never been to these places. I don't know anything about science and all that. So I borrow the brains of the people who do know and who have been there. And I documented their names, their books, the international book standard number and all that. And that preacher said, hey, well, you know, that's just the words of men. That's what they say about the Bible. But then again, when you say something stupid and foolish, well, you know, that blood of, of when Jesus comes back on his garments is his blood. Chapter and verse. Uh, uh, you know, that's, that's what my people teach. You know, I haven't heard that doctrine. No, I haven't heard that doctrine. That's a very foolish doctrine. Don't call no man you're fully being danger to hell council. They've heard the word of God. They are afraid of the word of God. They are wanting to get right in God. And so they take the preacher 
with the words that come here. So Baruch the son of Nehemiah took the roll in his hand and came unto them. And they said unto him, Sit down now and read in our ears. So Baruch read it in their ears. This guy is getting invitations for the Word of God. The correct Word of God. Now it came to pass when they had heard all the, all the words, they were afraid both one and another. The fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. When somebody is afraid of what God says, you've got God working on the heart. I love to see people would get afraid of the word of God. We will surely tell the king all these words. Now this is going to the head of your government. Now what would happen to a Christian today? Man, we, we, we heard the preaching of the word. Wow, man. I can't believe it. I mean, there's, there's the mark of the beast, and there's the Antichrist, and the rapture, and, and Jesus will be coming after all that. And, and yeah, what, what, what are we going to do? Take these words to the President of the United States. Uh, Biden? Uh, he's not my president. He stole the boat. Aren't you going to wait? Oh, he's Democrat. I want to tell you something, my friends. I don't vote. I preach the gospel. I have sent a letter and gospel track going all the way back to President Reagan. About their soul. I'm going to tell you, all, I got a letter back from all those presidents. I got all those letters back from all the presidents, but three of them. I didn't get a letter back from Obama. I didn't get a letter back from Trump. I didn't get a letter back from President Biden. The two presidents you hate and the president you love, I did not get anything back. From the gospel tracts and the letters I sent them. They are saying, we're going to take this to the king. We're going to tell the king what we've heard. And they asked Baruch, saying, tell us how. How didst thou write all these words at his mouth? And Baruch said, answered him, said, he pronounced all the words unto me with his mouth. And I wrote them with ink in a book. Preservation. Inspiration. Inspiration God spoke to Jeremiah. Documentation Jeremiah spoke it to Baruch. He put it in ink. And preservation, preservation that we are reading it today. Then said the, pre, the princes in the Baruch, Go hide thee, thou and Jeremiah, how are you going to hide Jeremiah? He's in prison. Let no man know whereby ye be. It's almost like they assume they already know what the attitude of the king is going to be. And they went into the king into the court. But they laid up the roll in the chamber of Lishima to scribe. They hid the scroll and told all the words in the, the ears of the king. So the king sent Jehudai to fetch the rule. And he took it out of Elishama, the scribe's chamber. And Jehudai read it in the ears of the king. And in the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. The word is now getting read in the Oval Office of the palace in Jerusalem. Everybody that attends to the king is hearing Jeremiah's word 
while Jeremiah is in prison. It's a type of Paul. Paul wrote in his one of his letters, he says, those of, of Caesar's house reach you. Paul knew people who were under Caesar. And it came to pass that when Jehudai had read three or four leaves, we call pages, he cut it with a penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth. And to the, all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. So he burned the word of God. Yet they were not afraid, nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard his word. Now this is not the, the people that had Baruch reach them. This is the people in the in the room, in the area of the attendance to the king. They had no fear. Nevertheless, El Nathan and Deliah and Gemar, these are the ones who were afraid, had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the robe, but he would not hear it. These are three men that they are fear of God. They're like, King, don't do it. Repent. I, listen, the Old Testament salvation is, you didn't know. It's quite possible that you will see, oh, Nathan, Delilah, and Gemaniah, you will see them in the millennium. You will see them in the eternal life. They feared God and wanted to get right and stood against the king in doing wrong. Notice that name, El Nathan. Wasn't it Nathan that stood up to David? Thou art the man. But the king commanded Jehoramiel, the son of Hemlech, and Sarariah, the son of Azur, and Shemaniah, the son of Dio, to take Baruch the scribe, oh, there he is, he's a scribe, in charge of the word of God, and writings, and Jeremiah the prophet, but the Lord hid them. Remember they, remember that day Baruch, he said, all right, we're going to go before the king, but you go hide in Jeremiah. Jeremiah is in prison. But the Lord hid him. Like the Lord hid Moses. That's quite interesting because how did God hide Jeremiah in prison? And then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. After the king had burned the roll, and the words about Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah. So the roll was burnt, done, ashes. Take thee another roll. And write it in all the former words, what we just read, the 27 verses. That were in the first roll. That Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, had burned. Right. What we just read has been burned. And thou shalt say to Jehoiakim, king of Judah... Thus saith the Lord. Now, verse 29 to verse 31. You find in verse 32. Now look at the, before we read on, look at the end of verse 32. And there were added besides unto them many like words. So when we come back and read verse 29 Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt burn this roll. That's the added words and like many other words. So the originals were burned in the fire. And we've got the copy of the originals and verse 29, verse 30, verse 31, verse 32 in addition to the original. 
Verse 29, verse 30, verse 31, verse 32 was not put in the heart. So if you could get the originals of what we just read, on that harp in the ashes, you will not find 29, 30, 31, and 32. And yet, verses 29, 30, and 31, 32 are just as inspired as the originals that were cooked on the harp. So, when you claim the originals, now, man is told not to add to the Word of God or subtract to the Word of God. Those modern Bibles do it. But if God wanted to add to his word, God is all purpose into adding to the word of God. Not man. So when we read, thus saith the Lord, thou hast burned this roll, and on, this is the many words extra. Why hast thou written therein, saying, now this is a problem Jehoiakim had. The king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land. That's the problem Jehoiakim had. My land is going to be destroyed. And that's like Christians today. You know what they're afraid of? They're not afraid of, of a nation. We're not going to have no more Republicans run. We're going to have no more freedom. And the freedom and all that they're talking about is to do the things they want to do and not the things of God. Everyone that say, "Oh, we, we don't, we, we don't, we want the freedom and we want all that." And how many of them go out and witness and preach and tell people about Jesus? Now they want to have the freedom and liberty to do what they want to do outside what the Bible tells them. And these would be the people, you know. At the first great chance they can skip church Sunday morning, they would do it. Without an excuse. And yet, but the destruction of Jerusalem will bring something better. Because with the destruction of Jerusalem, the anger of God, God will correct them. God will chase them. They will get right under Israel and Nehemiah. But do you realize if they had never gone to Babylon, we would not have the books of Ezekiel and Daniel? Those books were written in Babylon with Jerusalem destroyed. You know, if you would let God give you the government that God wants and not what you care about, you know, social, no, no. Let, let's just look at the fact that if we just let God do what he, he wants to do and what according to the scriptures to be done, he's going to bring in the Antichrist. Maybe Biden will bring the president to the Antichrist. I don't know. Maybe Donald Trump will get reelected and he'll bring in, I don't know, but if we just let God do, rather than cry baby and sissy wet in our pants and, and soiling our underwear, because we didn't get what God knows better. And so what if whatever president, if they are of the devil, Matthew 4, Luke 4, God allows it. And I know the great next leader is going to happen in this world is the Antichrist. And the fact is, you teach about socialism and communism, that's the rulership of the Antichrist. Friend, you don't disturb, you don't... What's the word I'm looking for? You don't deserve the kind of democracy and freedom of this government because you're not doing it for God. There are Christians out there who spend more money for pet food, more money for ammunition, more money and time for America than they do for the Bible and for God and anything. You don't 
you don't disturb that kind of nation. We are a fat flesh, American fat picket, money hungry. We'll, we'll, we'll step on anybody's back to get that almighty dollar. Maybe God should break this nation. I'll tell you one of the number one things that break this nation is landlords. And Donald Trump was one of them. And in his financial crisis, he went bankrupt six times. And then divorced three times. Your typical Bible-believing church would not even allow Donald Trump as a member of their church, never mind their government. The sins of Sodom and his neighboring cities are the sins of America today. And I ain't talking about the sins of sodomy, though that's one of the sins. Now, God has given ample opportunity under Ezra and, and Jeremiah to preach to the people and teach the people to repent and get right, and they don't. And one of the things we get out of it, we get Daniel and Ezekiel. And then we'll have Ezra and Nehemiah. I forget if it's Zephaniah or Zechariah. A lot of books of the Bible came from this time of the captivity in Babylon and afterwards. Jehoiakim's concern is, no, you're not going to destroy my nation. Oh, yes, God will. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David. Oh, there's O earth, earth, earth. Right, this man child. There's a virgin birth as Zedekiah. We've got two virgin births coming up through the book of Jeremiah. As far as the man seed of these men, God says, that's it. You're done. And the only way God can bring a man of David, promise to David, the covenant of David, is through the virgin birth of a woman named Mary, whose family comes from David, but breaks off at, she doesn't come from Solomon, like her husband who adopts Jesus, Joseph. Do you know what, what line Mary comes from? At the broken piece of Solomon, she comes from. Go up, look at his name. Go look up his name. Verse number. See verse twenty-five. You still you see that L Nathan? Take off the E L Nathan. There's a man named Nathan that's the son of David. That's Mary's great 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 grandfather. And you know where where David named that boy? Named them after a prophet. And God says, I'll even make it interesting in the book of Jeremiah. I'll add my Jehovah L. Let me let me look this up real quick. Let's see what that name means. To whom God has given the gift of God, God has given. So Nathan means gift or given. Looking it up. I think I, oh yeah, but I wonder that one. So gift or given. Right this man childless. None of your seed is gonna sit in the throne of God. So we got a man who shows up gift. Gift of God. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave. You got a man's name that just shows up in a list of names and from a king that God said, okay, I'm all done with your seed. And you got the virgin birth. And then you got the very name and the very activities and the very function of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what do many Christians say? I'll, I'll name one. I know a Christian. I don't read the Old Testament. 
I find it boring. Without studying the scripture, you would miss Nathan. His dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat. No burial. In the night to the front. His body is going to get no burial. That's important to the Jews. I will punish him. You, you, realize, you realize what's going to happen to these Christian Americans today? They're not going to get what they want. They're, they're, they're going to be upset and angry with God. They're not going to get the full blessings of God. And if they are saved, they're surely not going to get any blessing and reward in heaven. And in preachers like me that teach the Word of God, and, and you just get angry at me, and you get upset with me, I'm trying to preach the Word of God, I'm trying to teach you. And when the fire is put to your work, if you're saved, you're going to have a loss. I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity. Unconfessed sin does not get reward. And in America, unconfessed sins of rebellion, that's what it's called, ain't going to get you no rewards in heaven. Pride and rebellion is the sins of America that carries over into those who are saved. And rebellion and pride does not get you any rewards. I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Now imagine if the king got correct. Imagine if the king repented. What would happen to some of these people are already afraid of the word of God. A revival could have broken out right there with with the king getting right. But he didn't. You know, wouldn't it be funny, wouldn't this be interesting, we all get to heaven. Oh Lord, what happened to that, that revival we kept praying for? Well listen man, if you would have witnessed the President Biden, he would have gotten saved, and that revival would have been through President Biden. A Democrat? No God, the revival will happen with Trump. No, you got your eyes on the wrong trunk. You know, there's more chances that Biden could be saved over Trump. I don't know about Trump. You might find him in hell. I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing about Biden. He's a Roman Catholic. Roman Catholics can get saved. They believe in the virgin birth. They believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, no, he believes in baby burning and all that. So what did President, what did President Trump do about stopping the abortions? Nothing. I'm going off on a bandwagon here. The man that you reject could cause your troubles and problems. This king rejected Baruch's writing of Jeremiah. What could have happened? We don't know. And all the men of Judah, and all the evil that I may pronounce against them, but they hearken not. And that's where unconfessed sin or even damnation of the soul. For a lost man, they hearken not to... I get out there and preach, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. There's a hell coming. If you don't repent, you don't believe, you're going... And they hearken not to the word and to the preaching of the gospel. They will die and go to hell. And I come up to a group of Christians and say, listen, you know, Easter, that's Esther. This is her statue. It goes all the way to Babylon. It goes all the way back to Egypt. God tells us not to go to Egypt. 
God does not want us in Egypt. We're not to have any other gods. We're not to have any idols. And if I transfer that over to the other religious Christmas holiday of, of happy birthday, Tammuz and all that, and if you don't adhere and you don't hearken unto the truth of God, and you take those sins to the judgment seat of Christ, your colored eggs are going to be boiled. Your Christmas tree is going to be burnt up. And God will be saying, hey, you see that man over there? Oh, yeah, styling. No, he was telling the truth. You wouldn't listen. He didn't have the scholarly that, you know, my people, he didn't come out of my home. I don't care. And it'll be here at the judgment. You see that man over there? That's Beirut. Yeah. Well, he wasn't Jeremiah, but Jeremiah used him. They had my word. Well, man wrote it. Yeah, that's what Jeremiah 36 said. Man wrote it. When I spoke to his ear. Then Jeremiah took another roll and gave it to Baruch the scribe. Jeremiah is not even writing. Wouldn't it be interesting if Jeremiah, the book by his name, was not written by Jeremiah like many of the scholars said. They don't even say Lamentations was written by Jeremiah. Yeah, what if Beirut wrote it? Or Baruch, however you want to say his name. Took another row and gave it to Baruch. The scribe, that's his job. Baruch means blessed. Happy. The king wasn't too happy. The son of Neriah, who wrote them, uh, who wrote therein in, from the mouth of Jeremiah, verbal dictation, all the words of the book. Now, watch that. Now you would think from all the words of the book thus saith the Lord, right? All the words of the book which Jehoiakim the king of Judah had burned. Well, what was that book? The word of God. What say about the copy? What do you say about the the writing now? In the fire, and there were added besides unto them many like words. And where do those words come back from? Verse 27, then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. I want you to write these words that were burned in the fire, burnt up. Wait a minute, Lord, hold on. Baruch, yeah, I want you to write these words. What was that, Lord? Okay. That was burnt in the fire. And we're going to add some more words. We're going to add some more words. Write that down. You got three beings. God the Father, the, the, the Almighty God, speaking to Jeremiah the prophet, speaking to the Baruch the scribe. Don't you know that message with the scholars? Uh, now listen, I know something. Uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, that's not the Christmas tree. I can imagine what they do with Jeremiah 36. I would be afraid to see what modern Bibles say about this verse. 